Hi, hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ramis Abulaje, and I'm the founder of Bote Technologies. In this tutorial video today, I'm going to show you how I pawn the cap machine on Actabox. If you're new to this channel, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. The first step in solving this machine is to connect my Kali Linux terminal to Actabox. So to do this, I'm going to click on connect to HTB and I'm going to choose the method which I want. I'm going to click on machines and I'm going to click on open VPN. So I'm going to move this a little bit and I'm going to click on download VPN. So this is going to download a lab access file. And once the lab access file has been successfully downloaded, I'm going to move into my download directory and right here I have the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this file to cap.ovpn and I'm going to click on the rename button. Once the file has been successfully renamed, I'm going to right click on file and I'm going to call this file. I'm going to navigate to my desktop and I'm going to create a new folder inside my desktop directory. The name of the folder is going to be called cap htb and I'm going to click on create and this is going to create the directory. So I'm going to navigate inside the cap htb and I'm going to paste the file which I've just renamed to cap.ovpn file. So once this has been successfully renamed, the next thing I want to do is I want to open my terminal inside the cap htb directory. So I'm going to click uh, open terminal here and this is going to open my Kali Linux terminal. So I'm going to type sudo open VPN followed by the name of the file which is inside the cap, cap htb directory. So I'm going to click on enter and I'll be prompted to type in the password of my Kali Linux and I'm going to hit the enter key. So this is going to establish a connection between my Kali Linux terminal and Actabox. Once this connection has been successfully established, I'm going to split my screen vertically and I'm going to perform nmap enumeration. So this nmap enumeration is going to scan for all the open ports that are available on my target IP address, which is 10.10.10.254, and I'm going to hit the enter key. So I'm going to go back to my Actabox account and I'm going to click on join machine button. So this is going to assign an IP address of 10.10.10.245 for me, and I'm going to click on the IP address and this is going to copy the IP address. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and the nmap scanning is still going on. I'm going to open a new terminal and inside the new terminal, I'm going to add the IP address to my etc host file by typing sudo nano etc forward slash host. And I'll be prompted to type in my password and I'm going to hit the enter key. So right under the blurry htb uh, file, I'm going to paste my clipboard and I'm going to type the domain name of my IP address of my machine, which is cap.ovpn, and I'm going to hold control plus X. I'm going to press Y and I'm going to hit the enter key to save the file. So once this has been successfully saved, I'm going to close this and right here we have the nmap scan to have been completed. So right here we have three open ports. We have port 21, we have port 22, and we have port 80. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to my browser and I want to paste my IP address which is 10.10.10.245 and I'm going to hit the enter key. So this is going to redirect me to the security dashboard of CAP machine. So right here we have the dashboard, we have the security snapshot, we have the IP config and also we have the network status. So now I need to find the vulnerabilities that can be exploited on this website. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the user Nathan and I'm going to click on message. So right here, I didn't see any changes. So I'm going to click on settings to see if we can navigate inside the settings tab. Unfortunately, we couldn't find anything useful on this uh, tab. So I'm going to click on network status and right here, we are going to see all the active internet connections that are going in into the target uh, machine. So right here, we have one to seven. We have uh, the protocols to be TCP, UDP and Unix. So I couldn't find anything useful. So I'm going to click on the IP config. Inside the IP config tab, uh, right here, we have the uh, machine IP address, which is 10.10.10.245. And I have the local IP address, which is reserved for the loopback. So I have 127.0.1. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything useful in this tab as well. So I'm going to click on the security snapshot to see if we can find anything useful in uh, pounding our machine. So right here, I have uh, the number of packets to be one. I have the number of IP packets to be one as well. And I have the number of UDP packets to be zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. So right here we have data forward slash three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify these numbers to see if 
there is going to be any changes so i'm going to change this to two and let's see if the number of packets and ip uh, packet changes so right here we have the number of packets to be 355 number of ip and tcp packet to be 355 as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify this data to be one and let's see if we can find any changes as well so right here we have the number of packets to be 17,630, number of ip packet and tcp packet to be 17,479 as well so i'm going to modify this one more time and i'm going to change the value to zero to see if we can find anything useful so right here we have the number of packets to be 72 ip and tcp to be 69 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the download button and this is going to download a wireshark file so what we need to do is we need to analyze this file using wireshark so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click right inside this download directory and i'm going to choose the option open terminal here once the terminal has been successfully launched i'm going to type wireshark then followed by the part of the file which i've just downloaded which is located inside the own boltec download and this is the name of the file so i'm going to hit the enter key and this is going to open this file in wireshark so i'm going to expand this a little bit so that you can see my screen so right here we have some of these uh packets filtered so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the second uh, option and right here we have uh one of our requests so one of our requests has an interesting text which shows pass and we have a text so probably this is going to be um one of the vulnerabilities we are looking for so i'm going to click on this packet and i'm going to right click and choose follow i'm going to click on the tcp stream and this is going to <clears throat> open the flash or the wireshark in uh, a text editor so right here i have the user to be nathan and i have the password to be bucket at form 3 uh, with an exclamation mark so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this and i'm going to choose copy so once this has been successfully copied the next thing i want to do is i want to see if we can get a reverse shell at nathan so what i'm going to do is i'm going to split the screen vertically and i'm going to type ssh nathan at 10.10.10.245 and i'm going to hit the enter key so this is going to prompt me to type in my password and i'm going to try to see if the password we got from our flash our wireshark file is going to work for it and i'm going to hit the enter key so luckily we are able to get the reversal so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to list out all the files uh at nathan and i'm going to type ls and i'm going to hit the enter key so right here i have the user.txt file and i'm going to type cat user.txt to read the content of the file and i'm going to hit the enter key so right here we got our user flag so the next thing to do is we need to get our root user flag so to do this we need to um, write some uh, privilege escalation python file so to do this i'm going to create a new python file so the new python file is going to be called exploit and i'm going to type nano exploit.py and i'm going to hit the enter key so right inside the exploit.py file i'm going to type import os and on the new line i'm going to type os dot set user id and i'm going to set the user id to zero and on the next line i'm going to type os.system and i'm going to pass bin forward slash bash and i'm going to close this so i'm going to hold ctrl x on my keyboard i'm going to press y and i'm going to hit the enter key to save the file so once the file has been successfully saved the next thing i want to do is i want to run the exploit.py file which i've just created so i'm going to type python 3 followed by the name of the file which is exploit.py and i'm going to hit the enter key so right here we got the root shell we got root at cap so the first thing i want to do is i want to type ls to list all the files in root at cap and right here we have the exploit.py file which i've created and the user.txt file so the next thing i want to do is i'm going to change my directory to root and i'm going to hit the enter key so right here i have my directory as root and i'm going to list out all the files inside the root directory so right here we have our root.txt file to read the content of the root.txt file i'm going to type cat root.txt and right here we have our root flag if you really enjoyed this video please do not forget to like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel see you in the next tutorial video thank you